And just when you think it can't get any bigger, it got bigger. Look at this place. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Roger's in the way. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. These gotta be 36 rows of hard goods. This is my cart. Okay, I am in Lincoln Highway Goodwill. This is the Goodwill that I probably come to the most often lately. All right, do I need another children's wicker chair? Of course I do. Why do I feel a need to buy these chairs? I think all the little kids need wicker chairs. Look how cute this is. I picture somebody's wraparound porch with the grandkids enjoying games on the lawn and a little grandchild needs their own wicker chair. Let's see how much it's costing me. $5. So of course this is going to be local pickup or if Roger and I do a booth, which we're just starting to look into, of course this would go in the booth. So, <laughs> so that's my excuse. Show you what else is in the cart. I wasn't going to film today. Today's kind of like my day off. And where are we? In Goodwill. Roger's around. We're going to go for lunch in Laurel. Star Wars, C-3PO, Funko Pop, Bobblehead. And I'm paying $3.99. Probably only get $18 maybe. Total guess. I did pick up this vase. I'm probably most excited about this. This is that safety pin art. Look how good this is. Somebody sat there and put beads on safety pins. Just crazy. It's like a little bottle inside and I am paying $5 for it. Very, very cute. I think all the ones I have in inventory have sold. I think people like these. So always check on safety pin art. That's my term. I don't really know what it's called. Next up is a Lily Pulitzer shirt that Roger just found for me. I am paying $7 for it. Back in the day, this would have been $3.99. But Lily always brings the money. Extra small isn't as good as the bigger sizes, but look how pretty that is. That almost feels like that could fit a small. Um, an Athleta jacket, again, $6.99. It's not really a jacket, half zip pullover. Really nice condition, so I will take that one. Cold weather is coming, and uh, people start to layer up to go running. What else did I get? Okay, these are just for me. They are Dr. Seuss note cards, and I'm so in love with Dr. Seuss. Not even funny. I'm going to show you what they look like. Look how cute these are. They do have glitter, so that's a little bit of a minus because I'm not a big fan of glitter cards, but the cuteness of it is just too cute to leave behind. $2.99. I have to check if, you know, the proper amount of envelopes are in there, but either way, I'm going to take them. I did pick up this glass jar to hold our laundry pods in because we are going to be starting the laundry room or laundry area project of putting shelving and getting it organized. And I love these to keep the, um, the Tide pods in. I always get these. So yes to this. I found some iron keys. I'm kind of on the fence. They're just decorative. It's not like it's a really old key. $5. So mm, I'm thinking these are going back. The, um, the part of the key says something. Does that say love? I don't even know. I could be making that up. Probably says nothing. So the iron keys are probably gonna go back on the shelf. Somebody will want those. So the other day, here's a funny story. Roger was using the bathroom and I had a wrapped soap out um, just kind of like for display it wasn't really you know anything and he unwrapped it and used it and then he said to me Oh, I think I used the fancy soap was I supposed to use that so we cracked up and he found this today basil lime and mandarin So he said do you want this one to replace the one he unwrapped? I don't care that he unwrapped his soap just gives me reason to buy more soap love bars of soap these are little stained glass window art, $1.99 by Joan Baker. I have yet to look this up, made in Korea. So that is a good sign that it is older. It does look to be good quality. 
So we're going with that one, and I had a second one in here. Oh, another bar of soap. So we're getting that one too. Butterflies, always a yes. Now it's not a high money maker. Unless Joan is terrifically popular, I'm thinking probably 12 to $15. It's beautiful though. All right, I got a kimono. I took it off the hanger already. I found this in linen, so we're gonna spread this out if we can. I guess they didn't know what it was. Look at the print on this thing. It doesn't even matter that it's not really branded. This thing is stunningly gorgeous and the feel is so luxurious. Beautifully made too. So that is a one size caftan, kimono caftan. Um, some silverware, a big bag of silverware. Definitely getting that, $4.99. I got some other clothing down there, nothing really that you guys need to know about. Some blouses for me. Oh, this is cool. This is a flat sheet and two pillowcases, butterfly design, vintage, gorgeous quality. The percale is just lovely. Whoop, almost dropped that. A tray with the angels on it. I do like this tray. It seems like it might be wood. $2.99 is what's making me buy this. If this was like $8, I would have put this back, but that's a good deal. And I did find this tray, which has a little bit of wear on it, but mm, I'm on the fence. This thing is gorgeous. Brass handles. It's got this inlay in the middle, $5. I might clean this up and sell it locally. That is the thought. Okay, we are back in for round two. We went to Panera for lunch. I didn't finish mine, so there's my leftovers. Roger just picked up an Eagles Monopoly game. We did check that all the pewter tokens are in here. That's what you always want to do is make sure in your special Monopoly games that the tokens are in there because that's the first thing to go. All right, we're going to come around take a look at this doll in a box. She's not jumping off the top shelf for once. Let's take a look at her expression. Okay, she has a very good expression. And she has two different colored eyes. Check out this doll, she has two different eyes. Oh, Is that supposed to be like that? Oh, That's kinda cool. I have never seen this. One eye is like blue and one is gray. But her expression is really good. See how she's not that starey eyed? And she comes with a teddy. $9.99. I'm going to bring her in my cart, take her out of the box. I'm not sure why her eyes are two different color. I don't know if something's happened to the doll. But not even looking at that, see how good her face is? That's fairly good. It's not, you know, excellent. But you can tell that this is a well-made doll. Her hair is still intact in the net. Lots of detail and quality went into this. See this little yoke of her dress? This is all hand embroidered. Smocking. This is called smocking right here. The elastic, that, that's very time consuming. So you know you have something when you start to see pantaloons, socks, shoes. Look at that. Crenoline slip, violets underlay with a tool overlay. All right, let's see who makes her. And she has her teddy bear. I am concerned about the two different color eyes. Not quite sure what's going on there. Pauline's. All right, I'm gonna include some comps for Pauline so we can take a look at what kind of price Pauline's brings. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and buy this doll, even though I'm pretty sure the doll's eyes are not um, intended to be that way. I'm not sure what happened with this, but this is a doll that has two different color eyes, and I know there are children in the world like that, I am actually gonna buy this doll in hopes of a parent who has a child who has two different color eyes will find the doll. I know that's crazy, but I think that is a very good thing. I feel good about doing that. So that is what's going on with this doll. I will keep you updated if the two different color eye doll sells. Very different kind of video because I'm not showing things as I'm picking them up. We're just all over the store. You look pretty happy. You found something. What'd you find? Iverson, the Sixers, for three fifty. Good, but it's still good. Yeah. Does it make your day or what? Yeah. Penn yeah. State. 
Blue. Okay. Blue. Blue. Blue tag. Blue tag, not red tag. Today's red tag, right? Today is red tag, right? Blue tag. Or what is it? It's red tag, it I think. Tag. The signs say red tag. Oh, yeah, Sorry. <laughs> womp womp. Womp womp. But we did find children's golf clubs. I, yep, I even pick up the kids' golf clubs. I have never been stuck with them. They sell every single time. And these are $6.99 for a set of five clubs with the bag. So this is called Precise. I think I've sold these before, maybe, not sure. But um, I think every dad wants to teach. I should say every dad who plays golf wants to teach his child golf. So I always do well with these. I imagine they're gonna bring probably 35 on Facebook Marketplace. Local pickup, always local pickup with the clubs. All right, so I'm just giving you a view. Look how organized we're becoming. So they added about, I'm gonna say at least 20 more shelves and a lot more spread out. You can see everything now. This is the largest hard goods department of any Goodwill I've ever seen, ever, my whole life. All right, hit that like and subscribe button. Go out and get what's yours. Okay, so lately I have been finding lots of good items. Most of the items I'm able to show you right in the video. So when I go Goodwill shopping or antique shopping, wherever I go, I bring you guys with me most times and I show you right on the shelf what I'm finding. But sometimes I get a lot of questions after the video and it's it's things that you guys wanted to know about the item that I wasn't able to talk about in the store. So today I put a bunch of stuff on the table that you guys have been asking about and we're going to just blow through a few things and I'm going to share with you my knowledge. A lot of times it's what my guesses are and the research that I do after the fact. So I am a full-time eBay reseller and Lavender Clothesline here on YouTube, also on eBay and Instagram. And I never want to give the impression like I know a lot about anything. I don't, but yet I make a full-time living doing this by researching, using my intuition, and just asking you guys, what is this? So it works out really well. We're going to get started with this first item that I know what the item is, but I was really in a conundrum. And I want to ask you guys what your thoughts are. All right, so as you can see, it's the doll that I showed in the last video. Here she is. And I have no idea what happened to this doll or if the doll was a mistake in the factory or what went on with it. So as you can see, the doll came with a little teddy and even the teddy is very well made. Let me turn him around for you. This little teddy has movable appendages. I'm gonna put the doll down for a second. What that means is his hands and legs are all jointed. When you see a doll where the little accessory to the doll is detailed, you want to give it a second look. A lot of times, or most times, the dolls I see in Goodwill, I always joke about them jumping off the top shelf. And when you look at the doll, it's mass produced on a high quantity, very cheaply made, and they have these starry-eyed looks that are almost scary. This doll had a little expression in her eyes. The more lifelike the face of a doll, the more chances that you have something important or well-made. So here she is. I'm going to hold her close to the camera so you can see her expression. When I saw her sitting on the Goodwill shelf, I pulled her down right away and quick glance tells me that she is well made. She has correct weight to her. She's very balanced. So I think the majority of her weight is in her hips and her bum. It makes the doll sit properly and just pose beautifully. So I'm going to hold her back. See how one foot kicks out a little bit? She's just so poised and so lovely. The thing that really caught my attention about her is that she has two different color eyes. At first I thought, is that sun damage? Did she take like damage to the eye? I have no idea. The only thing I can think of is that the manufacturer at the factory, two different color eyes were put in by mistake. So at first I'm thinking, wow, that's a huge flaw. Nobody's gonna want that. But as I thought about it, I thought there are probably people in the world who have two different color eyes. I know I've seen animals with two different color eyes and it caused me to Google humans with two different color eyes and sure enough there are. So I thought for $10 I would buy this doll in case there is a child out there who would like a doll that looks like them. And that is my sole purpose for buying this doll because I don't know 
if the fact that she has two different color eyes, I think in my buying experience, that's gonna be a deterrent to the, to the average buyer, but I don't know. So let's take a closer look. Her hands are just beautiful. They're very formed. She has so much detail in her outfit. I did talk about that in the shopping video. This is all smocked elastic. That's a lot of work. She has embroidered yoke pinafore. So lovely. Fortunately, even though the box didn't have its top, the paperwork is still included. And this is Pauline's. I had never heard of Pauline's. Now I've shared that my mom was a doll maker. My mom actually created dolls from liquid clay. I mean, we're not talking just made the outfits. My mom made the dolls. It was just amazing. She had a kiln in the house. She had doll molds. She would sculpt the face. My mom custom made bridal dolls for brides that just took hours and hours duplicating even their gowns down to the last little pearl and stitch. It was labor intensive, but it was a labor of love. So growing up around that, I think it gave me an appreciation for dolls, even though I had no interest in it, you know, through my teenage years. But from that, from watching my mom make dolls and have doll magazines and doll books, and she was featured in magazines, it gave me an appreciation for well-made dolls. And even though I've never collected dolls, I really don't have interest in collecting dolls. Like I said, it really gives me a keen appreciation, is, is the word I'm going to use, for quality dolls. And Pauline's is just lovely. So I'm going to list this with the two different color eyes and show all of her beautiful finery. And I will let you know what I get for her. Okay, so I paid $9.99 and she's just lovely. The next item that I want to talk about, I didn't catch on camera. Here we go with the dust fly. <laughs> My house is very dusty. Let me just say that. From all the clothing and the textiles, I am always dusting. Um, so the other day, I was at Ritz Flea Market. I did film, I did show it to you guys the majority. After I put the camera away, I found an afghan that I spotted from a hundred feet away and I made a beeline towards it. I thought it was that beautiful. It is very bright. Tons of work went into this afghan. It does need a good washing. I might have to bring it to the laundromat because it's so big and so heavy, but I'm going to get it and show it to you guys. So as usual, I'm going to try to stand back and show this to you so you can really get a sense of the pattern, the print and the colors. I think it may be a queen size. It must weigh a good 30 pounds. <laughs> this thing is heavy, but look at the colors. Gorgeous. I don't see any rips or holes in it, but it does have a little bit, I'm gonna call it shelf dirt. To me, I use that term, not necessarily that it was really sitting on a shelf, but it's not stained. It's not like from pets. It's not like grease or anything. It's just regular dust dirt. So I think it does need to be washed. I'm gonna think about that. It, that's gonna be a chore. I might even have to soak it in the tub, there's a thought. But then hanging it wet, forget it. I wouldn't even be able to lift it. The only flaw, and I don't know if it's a real flaw that I see with this, is the back side of it does not have its little yarn tails cut. The whole thing almost has fringe, and I don't imagine the user would want this on their legs if they're really gonna use the, the, um, the quilt on their bed. Let me show you this. See that? So it has all of the loose ends, which I'm almost thinking I could clip those off. <laughs> Might take a while, but um, you know, when I have nothing else to do. And I, I don't imagine that this is supposed to be this way. I really think this crocheter, this, this um, knitter, it's crochet, was supposed to cut these off and they did not, but they are knotted. So if you clipped them, I don't know. I think it's gonna hold. Anyway, I paid $20 for this. What? It must have taken this person 
over 100 hours to make this thing. It's so gorgeous. If I get a chance, I'm gonna put this to the side. If I get a chance, I will lay this out on the floor and photograph it for you guys so you can see how gorgeous this is. Like I said, it weighs a ton. I think I might try selling it. Facebook Marketplace local pickup before I put it on eBay because eBay it is going to be an oversized box and the weight is really going to make it very high in shipping but I will give that thought but that was an excellent find I'm very excited for it this next item that I want to talk about is not about the basket which is a lovely basket it's about these color street real nail polish strips I found so we did catch this on film I got this at Elizabethtown there are a lot of them now I know about nail strips. I've never tried them before. Right now I was giving my nails a rest because I get my nails professionally done. I get um, just a gel polish, just looking at cars going by, <laughs> seeing if it's my neighbors. Um, I get a regular gel polish done and my nails were becoming weak from it. So I wanted to give my nails a rest. But after a while, your nails get kind of scrappy looking if you don't, you know, if you don't have them manicured. Let me just put it that way. So when I saw these Color Street nail strips, I not only wanted to sell them, I think it's a great idea, they don't hurt your nails, but I wanted to try them. So I did, now mine are a week old, so picture this, but a little bit better. I did trim all my cuticles, you know, and give myself a manicure, but I also tried these strips. Like I said, do not mind my hands. You guys know how hard I work and it's 62 going on 63. My hands are a little scrappy, but I was really impressed with this product. It did take me a while to apply them. So if you guys have used real nail polish strips, that's what they're called, 100% real nail polish strips, leave a comment down below. I'm dying to hear what you think of these. Now you can see how many I got. And the whole thing cost me, what did it cost me? I don't even remember, it wasn't much. I think I paid $2 for three of them, which worked out 67 cents a piece, and I got a ton of them. But very cool patterns and colors. I might hold back a few for myself, but I wanted to mention this again, because if you're a reseller and you're in the stores, or you're just a buyer and you're looking to have something better for your nails, I think these are really good. I haven't heard anything negative about them, but I really value your opinion if you have tried these nail strips. So like I said, I've done mine, this has gotta be over a week ago, and I only have one little chip. So sometimes when I'm in the thrift store, I look at something and it causes me to research things, and I really like this part of the business. So yeah, leave a comment down below if you've tried them. Here is the woven basket weave lampshade. I wanted to show this on this camera, you know, in the house rather than just outside. This thing is just stunning. This is all handmade. And these lampshades are traditionally arts and crafts movement, um, Adirondack style, farmhouse style, definitely. And also um, they're used on Cypress Knees lamps, which I did include some screenshots. I am going over this again because I got this for $2 and I'm thinking this is gonna sell for over $100. Yep, I'm gonna list it for over 100 because these get broken very easily and it is vintage, some of them antique. And there is not one split or one crack that I see. So for $2, I couldn't believe my luck. I just wanted to quickly run away and hide it from everybody that I found such a good find. So just wanted to share that with you. So I believe these are called basket weave lampshades. The next item, uh, people always say, why do you pick that up? I sell stuff like this all the time. This is a little handmade wood wishing well with a crank Oh, it's on the other side. <laughs> Turn it around. This crank actually brings the bucket up and down. How adorable is that? I don't know the scale. I'm going to say this would be maybe for a Barbie size. This might, a Barbie might be too big for this. 
So I'm not sure of how to tell scale. I will research that next. I want to learn, I think scale, if you say like one, like the ratio is one to 11, that means one inch is 11 inches in real life. I don't know about that. So I'm not sure of how to market this, but I will pick stuff like this up all day long. Somebody made this. Let me see if this, there's a signature on the bottom. Joe Connor, come. Commoner, C-O-M-N-E-R, Joe made this. Now these could come in kits, I have no knowledge, but if this didn't come in a kit, Joe has a lot of time on his hands. <laughs> Just saying. I love stuff like this. And what did I pay? Is there a price? It's gotta be a price, $3.99. So what will I get for this? I'm thinking at least $40 if they're not common. Okay, we're just gonna do a few more pieces. I didn't want the whole video to be a haul. Some of you miss my two hour hauls where I would bring in like 100 items and we would just talk items. But because there's so much going on, so many people like shopping, so many people wanna see the house edition and what projects Roger and I are doing, I'm trying to fit little portions of different things in the video. So hopefully you guys like this style of video. Please hit the like and subscribe. It really helps my channel. I have passed 450. 50 videos and 75,000 watchers. So thank you so much. If I never make it to 100,000 and get the YouTube button, it won't be for a lack of trying. That is for sure. All right, next up, flatware. Always, always, I pick up flatware. If the majority of it is the same pattern, that's the first rule. Number two, if it's a brand that I recognize. And number three, if it's in good condition and it's quality. So this is the bag. I paid $5, $4.99 for it. I'm gonna show you the pattern. Now this one does have a few different um, patterns in it, but the majority of it, I believe, is this pattern. And I think this is Oneida. Do I have glasses? I do have glasses. I'm just so prepared today. Let me see what this says. This says, Distinction Deluxe Stainless Oneida, and it has a mark after that. So what I do is I take a Google image search of the pattern and put that in. If that doesn't bring up what pattern it is, I then use uh, replacementslimited.com, I think. They are the biggest service of um, a company that sells replacements for your patterns, dishes, millions of dishes and patterns. So I will put in the name distinction, you know, I will type into their website uh, the full writing on the back of the piece and then look through their patterns. I don't know any other way of doing it, but I always pick up flatware. So we have that pattern. We have a few patterns in here, but it's a very big lot. So I will separate the patterns out and, um, and of course keep all of the same ones together and sell it as an incomplete set. Okay, this next item was an item that I picked up at the same time as the Afghan and I didn't get to show it to you guys. This is a basket, which I sell a ton of baskets. I ship out baskets every single week, all different kinds and also basket lamps and organization baskets and decorative baskets. This morning I shipped out Native American baskets, three little baskets. I think I got $78 for them. The easiest thing in the world to ship. So very grateful for that. Those I think I wanted at auction. I don't think that many people were bidding. I don't think they paid attention to them. And I think I got those for four or $5, I'm gonna say. So that was a great find. Baskets. So this basket I picked up because I've never seen this before. This has an insert in the middle. I'm gonna bring it close to the camera. So the center of the basket, at first I thought there was a doily. You know how doilies have this pinwheel design? I thought somebody had started with a doily, stiffened it, and then wove a basket around it. I was like, wow, that's really unique. 
but it's not. This is all made, I think this is either, I'm gonna guess pine needle. I don't think it's sweet grass, but I do think it might be from the Carolinas. So my basket experts out there, let me know what I've bought. I know you guys are always on it. I love you guys and appreciate all of your knowledge. I love when all of you get a conversation going amongst yourselves. That is the most entertaining thing to me. I love that you guys treat each other with respect and you're saying, hey, I bought this one time and somebody else comments on it. So what a wonderful community. But anyway, this basket is just gorgeous and I would love to know more about it. Okay, what did I pay for this? She wanted six, I offered five. It does have a little bit of staining. I think I can get that out. It's just a little tiny bit right there. All right, I'm gonna end with a G.I. Joe toy pack, accessory pack, because I don't find many G.I. Joes. We have a lot of resellers in our community. Everywhere I go, I see people I know, which is so much fun, but having this amount of resellers in our area, because the picking is amazing in this area, does really make it hard to find more common um, high profit items like in other words everybody's on it but I did find this the other day for $2.99 it's a G.I. Joe accessories pack this is the battle gear and it's from 2000 first let me say I can't believe that the year 2000 was 23 years ago crazy 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 and truthfully, I probably know more about G.I. Joe accessories than I care to admit because my son, Dylan, I will insert his photo here. He is very not on social media, so I really respect his privacy. He does allow me to show his photo once in a while, and I have done that on Instagram. He is my baby, um, yeah, in his 30s, so that's just crazy. But I played G.I. Joe with him a lot. He was very into G.I. Joe's, loved all the accessories and um, hours, hours and hours. In fact, when my mom used to come over to babysit the kids, he, Dylan would talk my mom into making G.I. Joe clothes for his doll because my mother was a very accomplished seamstress and she would. She made like jackets out of American flag bandanas. I wish I had those. I would never sell those. I wish I had photos. I didn't even think to take photos, but just amazing. So G.I. Joe accessory pack, vintage, absolutely yes. All right, guys, I think that is the haul for today. Just some things that I wanted to talk more about and show you guys. You guys had some questions about. Just know it's gonna take me at least a week to 10 days, if not longer, to get everything that I have in the house now listed on eBay. So recently, Lisa came over and we are working. The next project is to get as much of the clothing, the hanging clothing on racks downstairs, packed and put into the tubs. That's what we're working on. Yesterday we worked on that for hours and I feel like we made a dent, but there's still a lot hanging and I want to get it all folded down. All right. Love you guys so much. Hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, go out and get what's yours. It is now Saturday afternoon and Roger and I spent about an hour, maybe an hour and a half this morning working on the laundry center. So I'm going to open the doors and give you guys a little view of what this looks like now. Let's turn on the light. So this is how the laundry center came out. I probably will hang some kind of cute sign up there or something, but not in a big rush to hang artwork. We're just trying to get the house functioning the way we need it to. So this is the laundry center. I did go ahead, we did go ahead and hang the iron and ironing board on this little shelf that I bought on Amazon. Again, I'll link it in the show's notes. This is working out great. We did make sure to find studs. We used a stud finder. Here is the shelf we picked up yesterday from Coquelico Creek Home in Lancaster. These are gorgeous. This is solid wood beautifully stained, and they also include these iron brackets, I'm going to call them, very beefy and heavy. I love the farmhouse look to that. Unfortunately, my soaps are not as pretty as everybody else's on Pinterest, but I'm not about really making my soap bottles pretty. 
So that is what it looks like. And on this side, we hung the garment rack. Again, I bought that on Amazon. I think it cost about $20. And it's a great place for me to hang blouses and delicates where I don't want to put them in the dryer. But if I want to dry like jeans or something like that, I do have to pull these racks out. But the hallway is wide enough to be able to do that and still pass with plenty of room. So that is what the laundry center is looking like. Like I said, I might pick up something for the walls, something, you know, just to decorate it a little bit, but for now, it's great. Okay, so it is Friday morning, and I am on the move this morning. I have been doing all kinds of organization, and it just gives me a great feeling at this level to be this organized. Not to toot my own horn, it's just my nature. I just find like peace and relaxation when things run smoothly. So if it looks a little bit bare around here, that is because we've gotten some packing done. Packing down, meaning inventory that is listed, got packed into zip lock bags and put into the system. Here is the carnage from it. All of these hangers are from items that were previously hanging on these racks. Now, when you look at the racks, it doesn't look like that much clothing got packed down, but I'm going to say we did probably 200 items. That's just a guess. Lisa came in yesterday and we hung out together. Of course, she's a paid employee and we got um, progress. So that is always a good feeling. It's a great way to go into the weekend. Let's see what's sold. First is this lot of woven and wood items little vessels, very old. I won these at an auction on a tray lot. I don't think anybody else was bidding or if they were, these things I think I got for a couple of dollars. Something like this I can look up because auctions give you um, an invoice, you know, an itemized invoice. So the three pieces, and it came with this little old card. You can see how old this is. Chief Blue Jays Indian Store. So those three pieces sold for $78 and not many people were interested, but I definitely was. All right. So those are going out this morning. Also a pair of Lululemon shorts. Now, truth be told, this previously sold and I sent out the wrong item. I sent out red shorts. Totally my mistake. The buyer, her name is Jen, was wonderful about it. She messaged me and said, hey, these shorts are red and I think I bought coral. Totally my mistake. I gave her a free return label. She returned the red and the coral are going out. I relisted them. So that's how she uh, purchased them because I refunded her for the red pair and these sold for $38. So those are going out. A pair of Lululemon uh, size 14 leggings. Let me take a look at what this brought. Uh, $29.99. So those are going out this morning. So those three items, we're going to look at my phone and see what is next on the list. Next up is a Santa. This is made from a gourd. I see him right here. How beautiful is this? So sweet. You can tell by the scale of my hand how big he is. This is all hand painted. What? <laughs> what? Made from a gourd from somebody's garden. Just spectacular. I absolutely love this type of stuff. To me, this could be primitive, farmhouse, country. And while these generally don't fly out of my store, they definitely always sell. So what did Santa sell for? He sold for, just scrolling my phone, $29.99. All right, let's go on to the other items and see what we're shipping out. I'm going to keep this moving. Next on my phone is a Roseville uh, Blue Stripe Pottery Bowl. And I see that sitting right here. I love this kind of pottery where it has just like a, I call this a blanket stripe. I'm sure that's not correct, but um, so beautiful. I'm going to show you the mark on the bottom. This is Roseville, USA. I don't know what the original use of this bowl is, but definitely clay pottery, and it sold for $14.99. All right, we got the Santa. Oh, the next item up I've had for a while. This is a mandolin slicer. Hopefully I'm saying mandolin right. I think so, right? And here it is here. I have two. 
This one is a vintage one. I think I sold this with flaw in the title, in the listing, because I believe the plastic is discolored. The item still works, but this is definitely vintage. So let's see what I got for this item. This brought $10. So I don't know also if I picked this up in a very big lot and I missed that it was discolored. A lot of times when plastic is discolored from age, I leave it behind. I don't pick it up. So that's probably why I let it go for $10, but I still made a profit. Okay, going down the list. Next, we're going to pull a pair of shoes. Stuart Weitzman, a pair of brown loafer shoes. And it is so dark in the corner. I'm going to turn this extra light on. Okay, so I plugged in the shop light, which is helpful in this corner. Uh, Stuart Weitzman size 7 slip-on mules. These have a heel to them, so I would have put them in women's dress shoes. Flats are really like um, casual shoes and sneakers. A lot of times, though, my sneakers, I am putting on a sneaker rack, but if that is overflowing, it does wind up on flats and oxfords. All right, so a pair of brown mules. I think this is them right here going to bring these in the light so we can take a look at them. Pull this out of the bag. Now, like I've said in the past, shoes I take out of this plastic bag. I don't ship shoes in the plastic like this. I usually wrap this in a tissue paper or a packing paper. And then depending on the shoe, I either put them in a USPS priority shoe box. There are boxes made specifically for shoes and you can order them from USPS on their website for free or I wrap them and put them into a poly mailer, again, depending on the shoe. All right, so that is the Stuart Weitzman pair of shoes. Let's take a look at what they brought. They brought $24.99. Next up on the list, a Talbot's 8 knit dress. This is a Kelly Green, new with tag, $29.99. And an 8 is a medium. So you can see I have medium red and pink. This bin is out of order. Prints darks, and just medium. So most likely it's going to be in this bin. I'm going to pull this bin. Okay, here is the medium dress bin. Let's pull off the cover. Oh, and this is it right here. Talbot's 8 knit dress short sleeve. So I can bring that over to the table. I really enjoy this process when I'm not a crazy person <laughs> and my day is a little bit, feels a little bit calmer. I feel very organized. This is kind of like very relaxing. It's almost like a, not a meditation thing, but when you sell items and you're making a good profit and things are running smoothly, really nice way to spend part of the day. When it's all craziness and you can't find things, not so much. All right, $29.99. This dress is new with tags. Most likely I paid about $5 for that. All right, next up is a set of drape holdbacks or tie backs or scarf holders. All right, I think I see them tucked in here. Let's see if we can grab these and pull these out. So it's a set of two scarf holders holdbacks. That's what the official name is. Bring these in the light. And you can tell that they're new in package and have their hardware. All right, so these sold for $27.50. These are so easy to ship out. I just pad these with some bubble wrap and they go into a poly mailer because these are not breakable. I mean, it would take great force to break these. So I think these are fine going out. But if the box doesn't throw the weight over into the next category, a lot of times I just put them in a box. Okay, let's see what's next on the list. Three ornaments sold to the same repeat buyer. I do like how eBay has added a little um, notation of whether the buyer who purchased an item or set of items is a repeat buyer. That is great. It really helps to know how frequently people are buying from my store, you know, the same customers. So thank you to everybody that is a repeat buyer. So grateful. All right. So the order is three Hallmark ornaments. And I do have these inventoried with a letter. Whenever I have multiples of the same type of ornament. In other words, like this bin here is just Hallmark ornaments. I do put numbers or letters on them so I can just pull them easier. So letter E, C, and A has sold and we're going to pull this bin and pull those. So A, C, and E needs to come out. Here is A. This is Pop's Kettle Corn with a little raccoon on the front. Adorable. 
and C. I see here. I see C. Happy Holidays Decor and More. So that one is there. And we are looking for E, correct? Here it is. Here is E. Nuts about nuts. <laughs> so cute. Okay, Hallmark ornaments for me, if they are easy to pick up and they are new in their box, I go ahead and almost always pick them up if I can get them for a dollar or two. I don't pay a lot for these because there are just thousands, probably tens of thousands of Hallmark ornaments. Too much work to look up constantly for comps. So if I can buy in for a dollar or two or I can get a large lot of them and list them, you know, one after the other to make the listing easier, I go ahead Ahead and pick them up. Most times they're selling for maybe six to ten dollars. The three of these sold for 28 for the three of them. So that is a good deal. The last item that we're going to pull together because I've got to get this shipping out for my postal carrier Bob is a cross necklace. I think I recently just picked this up maybe a couple of weeks ago. Sixteen dollars. Let's move this guy over here. And jewelry is on this shelf. It is right here. I might just pull this out right here instead of bringing it to the table. I'll pop the lid. All right, does this have an inventory letter? Probably not because this is pretty identifiable. So a lot of times if something is very, um, you know, you can really tell what it is. Let's go into it. Okay, so it has no inventory letter that I see. So it's just a large cross. Oh, it does have an inventory letter. Look at me. Go me. Z3. All right. So I'm looking for Z3. All right. Here is Z3, the cross necklace. So beautiful. Has Isaiah 4110 on the back and a rope, twisted rope chain necklace. All right, so I'm going to get these items shipped out. Bob, my postal carrier, is probably on his way. And uh, yeah, we are in good shape. Hopefully, I will get more folded down. And the bigger items, I leave on a rack. So I just wanted to share that with you guys again. I do try to empty these racks and get this all folded into inventory. All of this is listed inventory, no death piles. So if you are a reseller, that is my best tip only buy what you're going to list because if it's not list you can't sell it so hopefully i will work on dresses next but like i said the bulkier items i always leave on a rack and the racks get covered all right hit that like and subscribe button and as always go out and get what's yours